The men's race should be closely contested. There's a number of hometown racers wanting to please the Sydney crowd and impress the World Championship selectors. Kamagori winner Chris McCormack is absent today, but Ishigaki winner and defending Sydney champion Greg Walsh knows this course well. His fellow Sydney sider Greg Bennett is also racing into form. I've had two podiums out of three starts and I guess I'd be happy with a podium but I'm really very seriously looking at this one as a win and um, it really is my home turf and um, you know obviously people talking about it being the Olympic course that's a bonus but really it's just the fact that it's another World Cup race but it's on my home turf. I know I'm in good form and I don't want to waste that form either. I don't want to come away from this race going, oh, maybe I could have gone a little bit harder. So I'm prepared to really hurt myself and see what I can do. I've sort of uh, overheard some of uh, Welshie's comments and interviews and, you know, he won it last year and obviously he's a Sydney boy as well and he's pretty keen to win it as well. Um, he beat me in Ishigaki a few weeks ago and I'd love to try and get one over him this weekend. Um, but in saying that, he's one of the best, you know, races in the world. I've raced twice. My first time was second and uh, last year I won. Um, if we have a good day, um, I think it's going to be a very, very fast race. Uh, I know there's a lot of people very eager to show, you know, um, their um, ability on this course and um, I'll be one of them too. Last time I raced two years ago I had a crash and the one before that I think I won one down here. So it's not a bad race for me. I enjoy it. Obviously home crowd and all that. So. Um, I'd love to do well here because it is the Olympic course and you know selectors are watching and all that so um, I'd, I'd just love to have a great race in Sydney. When I came here the first time in 97 that's when the points started towards Olympic Games selection and that was my push. I wanted to use that as a, a stepping stone to uh, the Olympic Games every year was to learn something on the Sydney course and um, right now I think I've graduated to the top of the class. Australia may be the dominant force in triathlon, but world number one Hamish Carter has yet to prove his best form. He was forced to pull out of round two in Gamagori, so he'll be looking to be up with the Australians today. I'm faster than I was last year this time, and I think it looks really good building up to the world champs. Uh, that's what I'm really shooting for, and this is a build-up race, so I want to take it as that. I really want to come out firing, though, have a good hard race, and. Um, go home and, and continue my build up. Hamish Carter still world ranked number one as we take a look at the top ranked athletes in today's competition for the men. Dimitri Garg, world ranked two, Greg Bennett, Chris Hill and Greg Welsh. And of course two different winners in two different rounds for the men so far and sadly the winner of the last round, Chris McCormack, absent from today's proceedings. Well, a very fast start once again, 75 men all diving into the water, an identical course for the men as that of the women. But of course the men starting at 12 o'clock noon, which means warmer waters, and it seems to be the choppy water seem to have calmed down somewhat since early this morning. Once again, confirmation of the Olympic distance for the sport of triathlon, a 1500 meter swim, a 40 kilometer bike ride, a 10 kilometer run, and the winner here in 1998, Greg Welsh, of course, the man who won the opening World Cup of the season in Ishigaki. Now, Steve, unlike the women's races, the men have yet to sort of produce their swim specialist on the World Cup so far this season, and the swim section of their first two World Cup competitions have been quite evenly placed. I think last year we got used to seeing Benjamin Sanson of France always out at the front and certainly in uh, the Sydney World Cup race last year it was Sanson, Craig Walton of Australia and Richard Stannard of Great Britain who really got away from the pack. Well Richard Stannard is amongst the competitors, he's in the top group there, we see Hamish Carter is the early leader, world number one and the fact file confirms the point made by Steve True here in the commentary box, only 30 seconds separating the top 30 men in Kamagori, 1 minute 30 seconds separating the top 30 women and I'm sure that margin was even greater in the women's competition here earlier today, of course won by Michaeli Jones. Hamish Carter and Richard Stannard are the front runners coming up to the first turn, coming up and through Farm Cove heading towards Mrs Macquarie's chair and Richard Stannard now taking the lead and looking very strong too. Now of course Stannard from Cobham in Surrey, a former British international from a swim background and quite a surprise entry and very happy to gain a wildcard entry Steve into this competition. 
Well, Richard raced here last year, as we said, and I think he did make a big impression on uh, the athletes and the people watching. Unfortunately, he had a lot of last season out. He uh, got an injury, tried to carry on training with it, but uh, certainly early season on our warm weather camp in South Africa, he really was showing fine form. Well, he's looking to make his mark here once again and really pushing very hard. But a lot of the big names and pre-race favourites are right up amongst them. As we said earlier, Hamish Carter, Chris Hill is swimming well. Greg Bennett is also there. And the French team starting to make their presence felt for the first time this season. We see Stéphane Bignet and also Stéphane Poulat also right up with Britain's Richard Stannard. But as we've seen throughout the season thus far, very closely contested in the early part of the swim and also very busy, very rough and tough on the turns that they're making out there, Steve. It is. I mean, no one seems to have got away. Richard Stannard's suddenly pushing the pace at the front, but he really seems to be stretching the pack rather than making a big break. And uh, in a way, perhaps this gives a lot of the swimmers an advantage. They're getting some of the benefits of drafting, but they're not getting caught up being knocked on the head, having their goggles perhaps taken away, and perhaps we're going to see a very fast swim here. And of course, for the second World Cup of the season, no coloured caps. It makes our life a little more difficult spotting the favourites out there in the swim, but the main purpose of that new ruling from the International Triathlon Union is to cut down on any of the bumping and barging, and particularly racers who have a coloured cap being, well, marked out by other competitors as somebody to make sure you get in front of rather than alongside of. The leader is Britain's Richard Stannard, just ahead of Stefan Poulat for France. The big pre-race favourites are amongst the front runners, including Greg Bennett, Hamish Carter. Good to see Jan Rahula for the Czech Republic right up amongst them. But we're also getting some feedback here to the commentary position of one or two of the previous champions from Sydney, particularly Miles Stewart, the winner here back in 1996. He's way back in the 30s and struggling to move up through the field. And you can see why with that excellent close camera shot, just showing how rough and tough it is as all of the swim trying to get the tightest line on the boy. Richard Stannard, a wild card entry, remember, really doing well, and let's hope that he can be as effective on the bike. But the man to watch out for is world number one, Hamish Carter, still looking for his first podium so far this season, didn't finish in Gamagori, and only fourth in Ishigaki. Well, Hamish Carter still very much in the chase here, but first out of the water to climb and run along the pontoon will be Richard Stannard. This is somewhat of a surprise, but great to see this encouraging young British athlete doing so well. Stefan Poulat is second. There we see Hamish Carter third out of the water. Vignet is fourth, showing that the French are as strong as ever in the swim. We spot fifth out of the water. Chris Hill sixth is Jan Rahula for the Czech Republic. Eighth position there is Rukasev for the USA. Well, already starting to strip down is Richard Stannard. 25 on your screens is Stefan Poulat, but there's the man to watch out for as he just about now shows us that number one bib, indicates that he's the world number one. This is Hamish Carter, who's determined to get his season off to a better start here in Sydney. Hamish Carter, 12 seconds down on Richard Stannard. And there you see the world number one, looking round to see Richard Stannard go by, not worrying him at all, as the Frenchman Poulat also looks to form the first group. Now, these are the threats from Australia. Chris Hill on the right of your screens, Greg Bennett on the left. And these are the local boys who are looking to appease the crowd here. It's grown from 10 to 20,000 throughout the day. Number nine is Greg Welsh. This is the man who won the opening round of the World Cup Tour in Ishigaki, Japan. And Welsh again, a very strong cyclist, a very strong runner. Not looking too perturbed that Richard Stannard is the fastest out of the water. Ahead of the Frenchman, Stefan Poulat. Hamish Carter third, then for France again, Bignet, Chris Hill and Jan Rahula. Well, as always, it's 40 kilometres for the bike section, six laps, and the fastest time in the last round of the World Cup in Gamagori was from the German, Stefan Vukovic, 56 minutes and 80. Heading up Macquarie Street on lap one, and already that advantage of Richard Stannard's from world number one, Hamish Carter, has gone, and these two now deciding to work together. There's a big pack forming just behind them, but Hamish Carter looking to make his mark and claim his first podium here in Sydney. But Steve, as the British team national coach, this is great news for Stannard, who's had a creditable performance thus far. Richard Stannard is a class athlete, and it's so difficult to even get a start now in the ITU World Cup series. And all credit to Richard, he paid his own way down to Sydney, and uh, he's managed to get on the start line, and he's certainly justified his position, working with Hamish right at the front of the field. Now this is a great camera shot because we can see the whole procession and the whole story developing. There's the two leaders, of course, Hamish Carter and Richard Stannard. Just behind them is another group which includes Bignet and Poulat, the French athletes, and then a much bigger group behind again, which has got the likes of Brad Bevan and Greg Welsh in. So there are three packs that we'll be focusing on with the leaders, Carter and Stannard. Now again, Steve, wondering, do they hold back and join their first group or do they try and go it alone? 
Well, it's a situation that uh, Barb Lindquist and Loretta Harrop were in almost in the women's field. Slightly different. There are two of them there, but it's difficult because it's quite a small chasing pack. And six athletes working together will go faster than two if they do it efficiently. We pick up the fourth chasing group, including Miles Stewart's had all kind of problems in the swim. But look here now, and the tactic and the story unfolds once again as Hamish Carter has slowed right down, looking behind. And Stannard and Carter are waiting for the second group to join them which will bring it down to just three main groups of cyclists. And this is key. Steve, they have taken the decision. They're almost stopping not to go it alone. Pack riding is the name of the game in round three of the Tour. Certainly is, and I think it's a wise decision. It's a, a small group. They are working well together. We can see them just lining through two lines, little turn at the front, move over, and wait for somebody else to come along and take up the pace. Carter has so much experience. Uh, he won't have done this without thinking it through. And if it justifies his decision to get off the bike with fresh legs, it's a wise decision. The lead group now established, and they are 28 seconds from lap one, 51 seconds after lap two, ahead of the chase group, including Greg Welsh, Brad Bevan, and many of the other pre-race favourites. We rejoin the action on lap three. Greg Bennett now taking the lead pack along with Chris Hill tucked in right behind him. Of course, Bennett third here in 1998 in front of a home crowd looking to go two places better. Lotta Leder for Germany calls it a day. His race is over. An indication that this is possibly one of the toughest races we've seen so far this season. Now, Steve, we have a much bigger group, a much bigger group than first anticipated. But again, we see them working well as a pack. They are working well. I mean, I think the bike handling skills of all these professional athletes have got so much better since we've uh, had draft legal races. And it's good to see Richard Stannard of Great Britain again justifying his position to be on the start line by maintaining his place in that lead pack. The chase group being taken along by Yamamoto of Japan, but we also see Greg Welsh and Brad Bevan looking to try and break down the advantage that the leading group is getting ahead. This is the third group now, which has Miles Stewart amongst them, trying their best to get close to this. This is the lead pack. Greg Bennett working very aggressively, really pushing them along. Britain's Richard Stannard is still amongst them, as is Chris Hill working well. Jan Rahula is also there for the Czech Republic. Now working very fast indeed. Back to the chase pack, Brad Bevan working well, and they too looking to try and claw down the gap on those leaders. And this is very fast indeed. Back with the leaders, Greg Bennett to the applause of the crowd, coming underneath the Sydney Opera House and around in front of the grandstand where this big, huge screen has got 20,000 spectators really wrapped into this competition. Ending lap three, going into lap four, Greg Bennett has the lead. Britain's Andrew Johns is tucked in right behind him. Richard Stannard is still amongst them. And as you can see, the crowd cheering on the local hero. The Sydney Siders really do want to win in front of this great crowd. There is the chase back, Brad Bevan rounding them into the stadium first of all. And a good performance from Bevan. He too looking to climb onto the podium for the first time this season. Mark Lees trying to make a breakaway from Brad Bevan, but not really looking strong enough to go it all alone. Now, lead pack to chase back, 51 seconds. And so Hamish Carter and co doing very well to keep the likes of Greg Welsh and Brad Bevan off their tails. And Hamish Carter possibly benefiting from the fact that there are three or four athletes that are used to training together out there and they really are producing some very impressive pack riding. The figures tell the story, 28 seconds, 51, 51 and then 1 minute 25. The leaders ahead of the chase group averaging 40 kilometers per hour, that's 25 mph. Leaders on lap five and working incredibly well together and putting the pressure on the chase group, which we see now, including Greg Welsh and the great Brad Bevan. And the pressure upon these guys' shoulders now, Steve, because they must start making their mark, otherwise the advantage will be far too great going into the final transition. It's going to be a big advantage, certainly, but last year Greg Welch was uh, in that chasing pack coming into the run and he was a minute behind Craig Wharton and Benjamin Sanson, took Benjamin Sanson very quickly and had that incredible sprint finish with Wharton, so certainly it's not all over yet. Second chase group, this is the pack that includes Miles Stewart who had all those problems in the swim section and again Miles Stewart, like Greg Welsh of a year ago, will look to make his mark on the closing 10 kilometre run, has got a lot of work to do if he's to relive the enjoyment and the occasion of 1996 when Miles Stewart won the World Cup here. Andrew Johns takes the leaders along and looking very comfortable, very efficient pack riding from the leaders. 
back to the chase group once again. You can see a lot of the athletes trying to sense or starting to sense that there is a slight amount of urgency required in their pack riding as the leaders draw further and further ahead, making life very difficult on the closing stages. Richard Stannard is still with them. 23 is Jan Rohola for the Czech Republic, working very smoothly. And Steve, we really can see a contrast between the lead group and the chase group. This is excellent pack riding. It is, they're so efficient, they're so tight together, the front wheel just very, very close, following the rear wheel of the uh, cyclist in front. They're taking perhaps 20, 30 pedal revolutions to the front, moving over to the left, getting their recovery for the, the seven and eight places as the other athletes go through, and then prepared to work again to draw further ahead, going into the final transition. Lead changes once again, Hamish Carr to the first to come in front of the 20,000 crowd and just look how this crowd has grown since the women's race at 9.30 earlier this morning. There you can see the chase group leaders, come on, come on, willing them to go faster, willing them to pick up the pace. Bennett once again takes to the front of the lead group, Chris Hill tucked in behind him, Andrew Johns is third as they go in front of the crowd and out onto the sixth and final lap and this has been superb pack riding, they'll be happy with their performance so far. Now as the lead group goes up the hill along Macquarie Street there we'll see the chase pack coming down that same hill and that chase pack is headed up by Mark Lees, another Australian. And this is a chance for Andrew Johns to take the lead now, Chris Hill is still holding on to second position and there you get to see the chase pack going down the hill and that really must be a psychological boost for these athletes Steve, actually seeing your advantage before your very own eyes. A uh, boost for the athletes in the leading group, but for the uh, chasing group, makes them realise just how hard it's going to be getting into the run. Brad Bevan, Greg Welsh, we see also in that chase group. Mark Lee still taking them along as they go across the Opera House and come back out on their sixth and final lap. Jan Rahula now takes them along with Greg Bennett, number four, in second position. Andrew Johns and Hamish Carter is there in third position. Here we see Mark Lee's again. They seem to be working hard. There is no question that the chase pack will push right to the end of this 40 kilometre bike ride as they go out of the Opera house and up onto Macquarie Street once again and all that hard work from Mark Lees looks to have paid off they're around about 1 minute 12 seconds down now so they've gained a little bit on that fifth lap going into the sixth and final loop Andrew Johns now takes the lead for the British team confirmation of the lap times show them improving through laps one two and three and four but gaining back a little time the chase group one minute 18 for lap five and on this, the sixth and final lap, the chase group now being joined by the group that were behind them, the third chase pack, forming one large group behind the leaders. We rejoin the action as the leaders come into the transition for the final time. The crowd cheering the Australians as they come into transition. It's Chris Hill and Greg Bennett. World number one, Hamish Carter, is just behind. Chris Hill possibly given first position into transition area, but it's very close indeed. A tenth off is Greg Bennett in second spot. They'll both hook up their bikes at the same time. Andrew Johns for Great Britain is also there. Hamish Carter given third position. Just five tenths of a second down on the two Australians. A very, very quick transition for Chris Hill. He's first away. Hamish Carter goes with him. Andrew Johns is there, but Chris Hill from Carter and Greg Bennett. The one, two and three with a 10 kilometre run now to be taken in. Well, perhaps we haven't seen the best yet of Hamish Carter this year, but this could be the opportunity for him to prove it in front of the Sydney crowd. Stefan Bignet, number 20 away for the French team there, a slow transition. And he's allowed the athletes that he was working well with on the bike to get clear away, and you can see the gap that they have extended already. Now the chase pack come into the transition area. And there is Brad Bevans right into your screens in that familiar and easily recognised yellow outfit. Greg Welsh is also there. Miles Stewart is also there. And these are the guys that will have to repeat the performances of this World Cup competition a year ago when Greg Welsh came into the final transition over a minute down on the leaders and ran like the wind to take top spot. That will be one that we will watch very carefully. The officials forcing the athletes to get off the bike at the right moment. Brad Bevan, Miles Stewart, Greg Welsh come sprinting in. A great cheer from the crowd. These are the local favourites. There you see Dimitri Gorg also looking to get a mix the action as well for Kazakhstan. Now Bevan and Stewart know they must get away very quickly. There's the winner from round one of the World Cup series, Ishigaki. A good fast transition for Miles Stewart. Welsh also looks to go with him. Brad Bevan just tucked in behind Welsh, but the leaders comfortably away and heading out to Mrs. McQuarrie's chair and already starting to split that lead group up with Chris Hill in the small screen leading Greg Bennett.
Chris Hill has the lead after the swim and bike with Greg Bennett second, Hamish Carter, Jan Rahula for the Czech Republic and the British team of Richard Stannard and Andrew Johns tying for fifth. The course details show us two laps over the final 10 kilometres, the fastest run time so far this season in round two, Gamagori, 29.42 for the winner, Chris McCormack. Greg Bennett has already started to draw clear and make his mark on this competition and this is something that we question, Steve. Has he gone too early? This really is a frightening early pace with at least eight kilometres to go. How do you choose to dominate? We watched McKeely Jones in the women's event and she was just so cool, so smooth, sitting behind Loretta Harrop on her shoulder. Bennett's decided to do something different. He's put his foot down from the start, he's moving away, and he's already sending out questions to the chasing field. And he looks so strong, they're gonna be doubting themselves more than he's doubting himself. Well, we see Greg Welsh, who's looking ahead and looking to see where the leaders are. And Greg Bennett really is setting a, a demoralizing pace for some of the other athletes. Look at him on the hills, climbing with absolute aggression, really full of confidence. He surely feels that he has the pace and the potential to keep us going. And this really is separating, splitting the field. Chris Hill is unable to keep up with this pace that's been set by Bennett and Chris Hill has dropped out of the chase. That leaves four athletes for the podium positions. You see Andrew Johns runner up, Hamish Carter is third, and Jan Rahula for the Czech Republic is fourth, but they are finding it difficult to go with Greg Bennett. It's a question of fitness, Steve. Can he keep this pace going? Well, I'm sure he can keep the pace going, but can he keep it going fast enough to take away from the chasing three? There are elements on this course where you're out of sight of chasing runners, and perhaps that's something that Greg Bennett has taken into account. Well, we see Brad Bevan back with some of the chasers there and Bevan looking unable to make his mark for a podium placing on this competition. Andrew Johns, we see there 12. Hamish Carter is one. Jan Rahula tucked in behind him wearing 23 for the Czech Republic. But again, Bennett striding out, looking confident, looking calm and looking to stamp his authority on this third round of the World Cup circuit. Of course, he's been on the podium here before. He was third here last year to Greg Welsh and he'd been second also in the opening World Cup of the season here in Ishigaki, the 27-year-old Sydney Sider looking good to take round three of the tour. World number one, Hamish Carter pulled up with cramp coming into lap two. It lost him 50 metres to Johns and Rahula. Closing stages of the final lap for Greg Bennett and the work has already been done. He has an advantage that now looks insurmountable. Chris Hill struggling back in fourth position. Jan Rahula and Andrew Johns look to be locked into battle for second and third spot. And like Nikaeli Jones and Loretta Harrop, that one will go to the wire. There is no question, Greg Bennett has taken round three of the World Cup Tour. Believe it or not, it will only be his second victory. Hamish Carter struggling with the cramps now, battles in vain just to put in a respectable top 10 performance. But but watch these two. Andrew John starts to make his mark. He watches over his shoulder and it looks as if the athlete from the Czech Republic, Jan Rahula, has nothing to answer with as Greg Bennett now is just preparing himself for the rapturous applause from this 20,000 strong crowd who will enjoy every minute of this Australian double here in Sydney. Again, Greg Bennett looks over. He has no worries. These two athletes focusing on each other because back comes Jan Rahula and Andrew Johns, the British competitor now in third position as Rahula tries to pick up the pace, but John's right on his shoulder, going with him all the way. To remind you, Andrew John's third in Ishigaki. He's looking to go one better here in Sydney, but already Greg Bennett can hear the applause. 20,000 have been glued to the big screen here in front of the Opera House, and this is the result they wanted. The local boy who was third here last year has taken his second career victory in front of an ecstatic local crowd. He prays now that it'll be the same story in September of the year 2000 but for now round three in 1999 has gone to Greg Bennett a superb brave performance a commanding 10 kilometer run and the reward is possibly a definite place in the Australian World Championship squad round three of the ITU World Cup tour belongs to Greg Bennett an emphatic victory <laughs> Now we turn the cameras to see who's take second position and like Michaeli Jones, Johns has taken his mark over Jan Rahula. Rahula turns to see whether third is confirmed and Andrew Johns goes one better than Ishigaki. He is the runner-up. If this were a year's time, it would be a silver medal and Jan Rahula, his best result of the season so far, taking third position for the Czech Republic. I knew the swim would be my weak leg and if I could get out and be up the front I knew anything could happen. We had a great pack on the bike, I knew all the guys really well. We all knew it had come down to the run and 
about a K into it, I thought, oh, this run pace is pretty slow. I know, I know I'm fit, why not give it a go and see what happens? And uh, that was one of my race plans. I did it, and uh, about 5K, I'm thinking, have I done the right thing? But I knew I've always got a good finish the last 2K, so I just hung in there. You know, it's only my second World Cup win, but to have it in Sydney, and I've said to all the media, this is the one I want to win, and I put a lot of pressure on myself and uh, to come through with the win. I did it. Confirmation of the Australian double here in Sydney. Greg Bennett ahead of Andrew Johns by 36 seconds. Jan Rahula is third for Czech Republic. World number one Hamish Carter fourth, Chris Hill fifth, and Watson in sixth position. Winner of Ishigaki, Greg Welsh seventh, then Vignet, Stewart, Hoog, Gog, and Mark Lees finish.